Joining me now here in studio is Dana Perino, Hello. co-anchor of America's Newsroom, co-host Hello. of The Five, New York Times bestselling author, <laughs> Everything Will Be Okay, now in paperback. And let's see, we had Greg here yesterday. We had Jesse Tarloff here yesterday. So now we have like 60% of The Five yeah. in the span of two days here on the show in studio. It's great to see you. got to get Jesse Waters in here. Uh, I agree. Hear that, Jesse? Yeah, Jesse. I know he's super busy with his two shows, but guess who else has two shows? You. Guess who else has two shows? Greg. Yeah. They, they managed to pull it off. Hello. I'm just saying. Let's clip that and send it to Jesse. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Okay, Dana, I want to start, before we get into some of these specific races, you just said something right before we came back from break. Just a cautionary word to Republicans and conservative voters. I think there's a lot of triumphalism out there. The polling is certainly looking a lot better, but... I know I've all, basically don't start measuring the drapes yet for your new offices. Um, the the momentum is clearly on the Republican side and for good reason. It's not manufactured. Um, and even the headlines in the mainstream media are saying, wow, well, look at this. And I think the New York Times poll was shocking to people the other day where they had women, independent women swinging. They were plus 16 for Democrats in August and in October, they're plus 18 for Republicans. That has really focused the mind. That means that people are not just going to vote um, party line necessarily, right? Independents. You tend to vote with the with the party that you always go with, and even though you say you're an independent. But in this case, it looks like the Republicans are winning them over, and partly is because the other part of that poll showed that on the issues people care about the most, whatever that issue is, the Republicans were winning, mm-hmm. 44 to 36. I mean, that... So I just think that one of the things that the Republicans should think about, and I'm sure some of them are, is that we can't have everybody believe that the Republicans have this thing in the bag because you don't actually have it in the bag until the votes are counted. Right. And if people think, oh, well, Republicans are going to win, I don't have to turn out to vote, then you could be caught short. Right. There's almost like this double-edged sword on one hand, on the positive side for the Republicans, is sometimes... Stuff can become sort of like a self-fulfilling prophecy where it's like, okay, so-and-so is going to win. I want to be on the winning side. Things do suck right now. Okay, I'm going to vote Republican too. And there's like a bandwagon effect. But there's this other side that you're warning about, which is if enough people believe that it's a done deal, then they get a little lazy. They don't show up. And then what is expected doesn't just magically materialize. People have to actually go and do the voting. On the other hand, it is also demoralizing if you're a Democrat right now thinking – why should I even turn out if the Republicans are already going to win? And if the headlines and even the mainstream press are saying the Republicans have got the momentum, that could hurt them as well. Let's talk about Georgia for a moment. Okay. We played a soundbite in the last segment from Stacey Abrams on MSNBC this morning. She was asked a question about inflation and why it's a much bigger concern to voters than abortion. She decided to try to tie the two issues together and cut 23. Having children is why you're worried about your price for gas. It's why you're concerned about how much food costs. For women, this is not a reductive issue. You can't divorce being forced to carry an unwanted pregnancy from the economic realities of having a child. And so these are, it's important for us to have both and conversations. We don't have the luxury of reducing it or separating them out. Dana, from this worldview, is there anything abortion can't solve? <laughs> right. Uh, the, the answer to, to uh, inflation is abortion. Kill more babies. Ugh. That doesn't really um, bode very well. However, let me tell her that at least she's honest because this is what she thinks and she's not alone. Now, I will also say this. We had a woman on newsroom the other day, an undecided voter, a uh, reverend, uh, and she said she was liked, she is a pro-life person, but she doesn't think the Republicans do enough to help women once they decide to have that baby and to help take care of that baby. And that she was leaning on towards voting for Raphael Warnock, the Democrat, because she thought that would be he would be more likely to help women like that. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, and people have their own calculus for all of this mm-hmm. stuff. I saw Eric Erickson, who's a radio host. He's based down in Georgia, pretty plugged in down there. He said what he's hearing from door knockers and then internal polling that he has access to in Georgia, that the top lines are basically tied in that race. I saw one yesterday that had 46-46. 
but the undecided seem to be breaking for Herschel Walker. Yep. And you look around and what's happening in the country, it's not that hard to understand why, especially if you've got someone like Stacey Abrams out there saying things like this and people say, mm-hmm. ooh, that, I'm not. Like that's your solution? I'm not for that. <laughs> right. And then the Republican ticket starts to look perhaps more mm-hmm. attractive. There was another poll that I referenced in the last hour out of Pennsylvania, Dana, where you've got this really interesting Senate race, Dr. Oz, John Fetterman, and Fetterman had the you know 11-point lead or whatever it was over the summer. I never believed that. But Oz was behind, and he is just chip, chip, chipping away. AARP poll out yesterday has it a two-point race, virtual tie. And the write-up said the undecideds in the pool skew Republican. Yep. So the question is, do those people come home, quote-unquote? And if they do, and some of these independents start tipping and there's enough ticket splitting, I mean, Oz can win this thing, I think. Yes, I, I've always thought that he could. If inflation and crime are your two big issues, and they should be, if you just like following what's going on in the not only in Philly but in across the state, like what people are going through, and and, and Oz is really focused in on the ravages of fentanyl uh, in the, that state, and he's been on the ground meeting with people who are either addicted or the parents of those who are addicted, trying to get their sons and daughters off the streets. I mean, I, I do think that he has been touched by the people that he has met. He's pretty tireless. He's in putting his, in a lot of work. Yes, he, yes, he has, he has really, I think that he has earned it. He has worked for it and he has earned it. There is, but there are still those polls that say that you know people just like Fetterman. They like him more than Dr. Oz, but sometimes you want to go with somebody who promises to actually fix the problems, not just likability. And Oz's likability has come up and mm-hmm. Fetterman's has come down. down yeah. He still has a slight edge there. Did you there. see that Fetterman is running ads on MSNBC asking for donations? That's weird. That started today. That's weird. That's weird. So I don't know if they have, I don't know what, the, what, the, what that strategy is. Well, and speaking of strategy and press strategy, you know something about mm-hmm. this. To have the Fetterman campaign and the candidate's wife, that one reporter called the de facto candidate and then deleted the tweet because they were like, oh, we don't want to call her that. Oops. But you had this reporter at NBC, got the first in-person face-to-face interview with Fetterman. She disclosed to the audience that he seemed to be a little confused or, you know, disoriented during the small talk before they Mm -hmm. had the closed captioning. I mean, they lowered the boom on this woman. Journalists were mad at her because they're Democrats. Democrats were mad at her because they're Democrats. The campaign decided to keep it alive. Fetterman's wife is like, she should apologize. I found that whole thing. They threatened to sue the station. So weird. Yeah. they the, Actually, and his campaign has been very clever and pretty funny. Actually, throughout the summer, I when when Fetterman could actually literally could not speak mm-hmm. to the media, they kept his campaign alive through some pretty funny memes, the tweets. And they that went kind after of stuff. Oz, like they kept the Crudite. buzz alive. Yep. Yes, they kept. The, they were very good. So this seemed like a big misstep to me. They should have just let it go because I don't think that Fetterman's health issues are really the thing that people are going to vote on. I do think it's the issues. It might weigh on. It it might tip you over towards Oz if you're kind of, if you're really undecided. Mm -hmm. But I do think that there are enough people who have been offended or say they're offended by attacks on Fetterman's health, that it's worth continuing to focus on inflation, crime, fentanyl. And if they're like, if they want to make the campaign about their own candidate's health and, you know, act aggrieved that anyone's asking questions about it, I think that's a strange choice. When it was cute memes about crudite in New Jersey, You know, that's fine. But if the main issues are crushing inflation and crime and you're still running this other kind of campaign and your candidate is quasi incapacitated, but not completely. And he's I mean, it's they are in a very different electoral environment right now than they were a few months ago. And it doesn't seem like they've fully adapted to it. One thing that's going to be very key for Oz is to try to get his numbers up in Philly or at least to depress Fetterman's numbers in Philly. It matters a huge amount. He spent a lot of time there. Yep. I don't know how that's going to turn out. Well, I did hear from a friend who knows Philly politics in particular that mm-hmm. he was hearing that the Fetterman people are very worried about their numbers in Philly proper. Well, that must be why they're running this ad on MSNBC. Yeah, please give us money so we mm-hmm. can. I mean, part of the thing is the the Oz campaign is pointing out that John Fetterman chased down an innocent jack, black jogger with a but, shotgun, right? And, like, then his, and his ex- excuses about it are pretty lame. His excuses about a lot of things are pretty <laughs> lame. Uh, 
What's coming up tonight on The Five? I mean, you're really close, half an hour away. Half an hour away. We're going to talk about um, basically President Biden making very political decisions on uh, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be our emergency oil reserve. It's not supposed to be for your emergency. You know, Political in case emergency. of emergency, pull this handle. It's right. not the SPR. That's not especially if it's not to go for your campaign. Um, and also we'll talk a little bit about the Stacey Abrams as well. What's the, what, what's the fun thing that we have? Hold on. So hold, please. The fun thing we have, oh my gosh, it's pretty funny. Oh, how many young people in America are turning to pot? Okay, that might not sound fun, but we'll make it funny. Well, I have no comment on that, Dana. But we'll I have hate to watch. pot. I never tried it, but I also hate what it does to people. You hate it, but you've never tried it. I mean, I hate what it does to people. Dana and Pruno. I also hate it when it gets when it, when your dog eats it and gets high. <laughs> we'll be right back.